I want to be famous. I want to be famous. Why can't I be famous? I want to be famous. I want to be famous. Why can't I be a... I wanna be famous. I wanna be famous. Why oh, can't I be famous? I wanna be famous. I wanna be. No, I ain't good enough. No, I'm not good enough. No, I ain't. Shh. Let me get lights. I'm gonna sleep my fucking wrist. Oh, what's up, guys? It's your boy Kilo Loco. All right, today we are going to be getting into some Kaitura. That's how you're supposed to say it, actually. So I met um, I met the creator of Kaitura uh, at uh, WWDC, or well, uh, San Jose, in San Jose during the WWDC week and all this other stuff. And then I got to spend a good amount of time with David Okun, or Okun, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say his name. But anyway, uh, I started talking to him about uh, Swift um well server side swift and katura and um you know he started talking to me about it and and i started to kind of you know like what like some of the things that he was saying so one of the things that stood out to me over vapor right is that um well one one katura is obviously backed by um imdb uh imdb <laughs> i want to watch movies right now uh by IBM, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, like so, all right, let's see, let's see, oh, we need a new window, let's do it like this, and uh, we'll go to katura.io, all right, so um Kaitura was made by the folks over there at IBM if I'm correct. Let's see if they can give us a little bit of background and information on it. Um I'm pretty sure it's owned by IBM. Anyways, they're behind a lot of the work. If if they, if they don't own it, then um yeah, they they're behind a lot of the work. Anyways, uh I started playing with it, thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm actually liking it a lot better than Vapor. And I spent a long time with Vapor, but after version three, uh, after they released Vapor three, I just kind of, ugh, I didn't like it. Look at, where is it? So there's Vapor codes. So I'm used to using Vapor. Um, I even I even got my little old my old picture up there and everything, but I'm liking uh, Kaitura a lot more. Um, another thing that that David told me about Kaitura is that it's not bleeding edge the way that Vapor is trying to be, where it's like it's trying to adopt every single brand new thing and do all the the newest and greatest and latest stuff. Um, it so. Kaitura, Kaitura is not doing that, right? Um, it's actually kind of focused on um, making sure that everything stays stable as it moves forward because they're focusing on being, um, you know, uh, not pro not not that Vapor's not production ready, but it's better to have a framework that's not going to constantly break on you, whereas Vapor seems like it's going to keep breaking as they move forward because they're trying to adopt all the latest um, and that was one of the things between Vapor 2 and Vapor 3, huge, major, groundbreaking changes, like, completely different, like, it's nothing like it used to be, and I don't know if, how many of the changes are gonna be different, like, breaking in Vapor 4, but Vapor 4 is already coming up, just for the, at least for the performance gains, and I don't know. I don't like I don't like writing writing vapor code right now, but I have started to enjoy writing Katura code. So um, yeah. So we're gonna get started with a quick little project. I just want to see if I could do this from memory. I probably won't be able to because I started looking into it like two three weeks ago. And yeah. So let's go ahead and create. We're in our KL learning folder because that's where I learn you right. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a directory, a folder, 
And we're going to make this bigger for y'all. Like so. All right, so we're going to make a new directory. And this is going to be whatever you want to call your project, right? So let's say I want to call my project um, uh, back, back that Swift, baby. Right? And then we're going to change directory into back that Swift, back that Swift up. And then what we're going to do is Katura, I think it's init. So this I already like because, and this is like really nitpicky, but when you're creating a vapor project, you have to um, create the project. Like you have to do vapor, whatever, uh, vapor new, vapor create or whatever. And then it creates the project and then you have to change the directory into it. This way it's, it's the other way around, which super little nitpick, but I just like it. Like, cause I never liked that part about vapor. Or I mean, yeah, about vapor because in the past, I, when I was trying to learn vapor, I would forget to change directory into the project. And then I try to do stuff and I couldn't figure out why I was breaking or why it wasn't working the way that I thought it was supposed to be. And it turned out it was just like, oh, well, you're not in the actual correct directory so obviously it's not gonna work but yeah um, just a little nitpick it does take long just like vapor does so that's uh, the first and let's just kind of go through the steps because I honestly don't remember how to do all this stuff by heart so getting started what is this create a server Oh, also they have um, an app too that also is supposed to work, but I prefer to be in the terminal. It makes me feel like a hacker, like I'm a hacker. And then, um, one of the things that is kind of bad is I think you have to actually create the actual project the Xcode project so that's one of the bad things about it add Kratura to our dependencies I believe this is already done for us let's wait for it okay so open your Xcode project Ooh, look at look at this it already gives it to us or run the app from the terminal you guys want to run it from the terminal let's run it from the terminal swift run we gonna make it knock on wood all right so let's see uh configuration manager Unable to do something where to unable to load data from whatever URL, but it is listening on port 8080. So if we go back and we go to our local host, bam, it's there, it's working. Look at this. We got no rib. Let's see if it has um, something in here cannot get okay so there is no endpoint called hello so I think some of their docs are a little bit outdated which is okay and then we're just gonna end this session right here if we go over here and re we refresh it should oh well yeah see now it's nothingness so that's how you know it was kind of working I'm out of sight yeah I think I might all right, so let's go ahead and open up the app, uh, the the Xcode project, so that we can be working in that Xcode for you. Knock on wood, yeah, I made it. Knock on wood. What? Okay, don't need to see the dependencies. Don't need to see the tests. So don't need to see this. Don't need to see that or this. All right. So the good stuff is in here. I don't think it's in here no um, if we go to the routes 
let's see. Um, where is it? Oh, application. I think it's here. All right. So now if we wanted to make a route, um, this is the cool part that I wanted to show. So what we're going to do is inside this um, post init function, we need to create another route. So we're going to do initialize our routes. So let's just go ahead and do initialize. Um, let's say we wanted to work with users, right? User routes. And then we'd pass in app, or actually, I think we would probably pass in router, but we'll pass in self right now. And what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to have this function somewhere else. So what? We're just going to go ahead and follow these instructions, codable routes, right? So let's go ahead and create that new file. Um, codable routes. Alrighty. Back over here. And so as you can see, we're in this file. Let's control contracts. Uh, handlers. So as you can see over here, we're just going to be working inside of functions. Um, we're actually not even going to be working with a class. So we're going to create a function inside of this separate um, inside of the separate file. And since Swift can see like across files, we don't need to do it. We don't necessarily need to do another class. So we could just say um, we could create our function that was called initialize uh, user routes. And then it's going to take in an app and we have to make sure that we're importing Katura. Katura. And this is going to take an app. And then we're going to do some other stuff. But let's go back over to, I think this is supposed to be in here actually. Let's go back over here and then this should clear up. So see how it's getting that nice sexy syntax highlighting. That's what we like. That's the stuff that we do like. All right, now I haven't done this before codable stores create a post route so this was another thing that i also noticed is that they tell you to pass in the app and then say app.router.post but it makes more sense to not pass the app you don't really want to pass the app itself i think it might actually be better to just pass the router and then we just pass the router like that and let's go back over here to our codable routes and change this to app.router. Is it app.router or is it just router? Yeah, it's just router. All right. And then what we're going to do is we'll say router dot uh, um, oh I need to change this to router like that and we'll say router dot and I haven't really figured out what all is um, I believe what it does is it allows you to um, handle all routes with the same name but we're not going to do that so we're just going to do um, a get and a post so first we're going to do get and then we'll do a handler or hold on a path and let me think right here this is what we want so we're going to pass in what what our route is so essentially you know our api slash users that's what we would want so we would want users and then we press enter on that 
um, handler. And then this returns, I believe this is just a request. If I'm correct, and we want it to, we need to specify what it's returning. So it's going to return, let's say a string, right? And then I think we need to do something like return kilo. I think this might be it. All right, let's double check what they're doing because I don't remember it by heart. We're doing that. So we want to do post handler. Interesting. Oh, you know what they're doing is they're creating another function and then passing it in. That's right. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to put what you're expecting to get and then you have to handle it with the completion block. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me just make sure that I'm reading this correctly. Yeah, so we want to create a post handler. So we don't want to do it exactly like this. We want to create the function first. My bad. My bad. So we want to do post handler or create user, which makes a little bit more sense. And then we want to pass in a user. We could probably just call this create because we sexy Swift, right? Create user of type user, which we don't have yet. Let's go ahead and create that bad boy right now. I see. I'm clean. So we create a user, and guess what? Just simply codable. Nothing stupid like how Vapor makes you do content, like, and you have no idea what's going on. You're just like, oh, okay, just content. Okay, yeah. No, you don't, you just use normal normal types in Kaitura, which is amazing. Thank you very mucho. All right, so we're going to create this user, but we also have to specify what the completion handler is. So completion at escaping, just like your typical um, thing, right? Did one too many. All right. So. Um, create. What did I miss? Oh, right there. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one more time. So now with the completion handler, you need to specify what you're actually expecting to return. Um, so um, you're usually gonna be working with a, a tuple that you're gonna, well, no, is this a tuple? I think it is a tuple. I think it is a tuple. So you're gonna be working with um, this object. So you're gonna have an optional object that you wanna send back and an optional error because either you're gonna send back the thing that you expect to get when you're doing an API or something's gonna break, like they're gonna pass in the wrong parameters or just something's not gonna go right, right? And you would essentially be throwing an error. So you're, you're either gonna send back the object that they're expecting or an error. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm expecting to send back um, the user that we just created maybe, right? Maybe, so optional, or a request error, maybe. I don't know, I don't know if we gonna get that error or not. I don't know. So. Let's go ahead and do some logic already. So we'll say let, um, actually since this is a post route, we are gonna have to send something up, so that's fine. And we'll just return the user that we got back. So, oh, actually not return, I'm sorry, completion. So completion 
it's going to be the user and nil so we didn't have an error so this is we would just be calling this so with this it's just going to return back whatever you send to it we're not doing anything fancy or anything like that all right so now what we want to do up here for the router is that we want to add this um, to um, a post a post method and then we want to um, pass in our um, our handler this is our router and our router handler function so we're just gonna pass in create like so I believe I think that's it might be wrong let's see maybe it's a different type only did this once before so leave me alone uh, post want to post and then oh it's one of these sorry so we have to specify the handler so the the route is still going to be users right well it's usually plural i believe and then the handler itself is going to be our create method i think that will work let's see let's see if it works or not um use of local variable before its declaration does it have to be done at the bottom I don't think it has to be done like that does it I didn't know that you had to do it like that so apparently you have to create the function first before you can use it makes more sense that way anyways but uh, yeah I didn't do that so now as you can see we're running on port 8080 and um, this is actually not even gonna work so what we have to do is let's go ahead and create a get method so We'll just say func get, and then we're going to get back completion at a copy. And then we'll be passing back a user or a request error. And we have to do this even though we know that it's going to be guaranteed to come back. I believe we have to do it like this. Um, we could have also done like a closure over here, but it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit to have it kind of segregate it. All right. So now what we want to do is we just want to return back. Let's just create a user with the name Kilo Loco. And actually, normally, what you would re expect to get back when you're doing a get is an array of users. So we don't want the users themselves to be optional. We want the response itself to be optional, which is why we're saying an optional array. Maybe the array will come back. Maybe. Not sure. Um, so that's why we're going to do it. All right. So now let's do our router. And we'll do dot get and then we'll specify what path and we'll say users and then we're going to say on our get method so let's go ahead and run this one more time and then we should be able to run get let's see what am i doing wrong oh i keep doing return that's how you do it in uh whatchamacallit in vapor silly kilo you so silly i know like this this is what you want this is what you want this is what you need crazy dude what's up donut donut not sure how to say your name sorry buddy sorry little buddy so now what we do is we say give me them users and you see your boy kilo loco right there oh. Oh, look at that isn't like isn't it so easy to understand Katero right now like there's no guessing like oh what is he doing oh he's just creating a function inside of a file like oh it's just a function inside of a file oh what's that he needs to create two functions inside of that function okay sure why not oh and he's just adding those functions to the router under this path oh okay that makes sense but where is all this being called? Oh, well, that's happening in the application. Oh, 
Oh, see how, look at how straightforward all this is. Love it. Super, super straightforward. And that's what I like about um, Kaitura. So now if we want to post, um, what we can actually do, I believe, uh, let's see. I think that we can actually, I think if we put them up here, they'll still, they, they'll stay in memory. So we can actually cheat. We could be like users, right? And this is going to be equal to an empty array of user, right? And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and return these users. So this is just a global variable. Bad practice, but fuck it. Right? Right? And what we'll do is we're going to also say let user... Or we don't even need to do that because we're already being passed a user right here. It's all being handled and decoded for you. Like you just say, oh, I'm expecting to get a user object back. Well, guess what? That's what you have to send. And it's just that simple. No decoding. None, none of that. All that stuff is handled for you. It's freaking crazy. So what we'll do is we'll say users dot append a user. Now, remember that this is just local memory and this is just like an app that doesn't have true persistence. So essentially, if you do this, what will happen is um, what's going to happen is it's actually going to uh, be deleted every time we run the, the server. So now when we do, when we get the users, we're going to get an empty array, right? But if we open up something like rested... Right, and we'll just make we'll just make the same get request in here as well. So uh, users empty, right? So let's do another one, and uh, just put it like this, and we'll do eighty eighty as well because that's the part that we're listening to. And we're gonna say users, and now I want to do a post request. So, and we're going to do this in JSON, baby. Nice, sexy JSON. Keep it all simple. So now the only parameter that we're kind of expecting to create a user object is, is the name. So I'll just go ahead and put, um, you know, Kilo Loco up in there. Like so. We send the request. Bam. 201 created. Look at that. Name. Kilo Loco. And then what we do is if we go ahead and get the get, Bam, look, it, it creates a user object, an array of user objects. Isn't that sexy as hell? It's so sexy. Don't even lie to me saying that it's not sexy because it is sexy. And if you if you if you tell me anything different, you're lying. So, um, you know, we just do Mr. Mr. Paul Hudson. That's my idol right there. And then, uh, oh, well, see, look, at, I accidentally didn't press um, send. I mean, I didn't press enter, so it sent Kilo Loco again. So we'll see two Kilo Locos in here, actually, which is kind of bad. But it's okay. Uh, Mr. Paul Hudson up in there. And now, bam, look at that. Simple, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It doesn't get easier than this, guys. Tried perfect, tried um, vapor. Doesn't get easier than this. Kaitura is the way to go. I'm telling you. Also, do it right here. Bam, look at that. Oh, sexy. All right. So, what we can also do is, um, you know, we can obviously delete and update. So, let's go ahead and create an update. And we're going to update our user. Oh, well, hold on. Let's go ahead and create. Let's create. Um, Let's create an ID on our user object, right? So that we can get that back. So we'll say let, um, we'll say let ID be equal to UUID dot ID or dot string, right? So now we have the ID like that but we can also 
Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So if I were to create a new user, new user equals user, I think I still have access to it. No, hmm, I don't. So what we would actually have to do is we would want to do this. Um, yeah, we can do UUID, that's fine. And then we'll do init. We'll say ID is equal to a UUID, and we'll just set that equal to dot UUID dot UUID string. So we'll give it a default, we'll give it a default value this way we don't have to automatically create it ourselves, but if we need it to create um, a user with a UUID, then we can do that as well. The ID is equal to ID, self.name is equal to name. And I'm not exactly sure that this is going to work as expected, but we'll give it a try. Um, because I don't know if you can pass up a UUID object. That's the only thing that I'm wondering. Can you pass it up? We'll find out. All right, so uh, we need to go to our codable routes, right? And since we're sending this up and it won't have a UUID, it should create one itself and then return back our user with the created ID. So let's go ahead and try to run this now. So let's go ahead and stop it. We'll run it again. And all these little bugs in my office hate it. All right, so now let's go ahead and check our users one more time. Just make sure that it's empty as expected. Uh, once again, we're sending a name. I'm gonna send Kyle Lee, right? Let's send that, let's see if it worked. All right, so it didn't work. Um, let me think, how will we send this up? <laughs> I think what we need to do is we need to make it optional. That's what we need to do. That's what it was, I'm pretty sure. Either that or we have to turn it to a string. So the problem is that we're sending it up without it, but it's expecting it to create that user object and it couldn't, so. So it sends back this user and we want to create a new user with that user object so yeah we want to create a new user so what we need to do is we need to go to our codable routes and we'll say let let new user is equal to user and then we could either create the UUID ourselves or we could just use this one, which is going to create it for us anyways. So this is just a user.name. We'll append the new user and we'll also return the new user. So let's try that now. Once again, try that get empty, bam, empty. Send the Kyle Lee. We get back the name and the UUID. So now, if we want to get a specific user, let me think, where is it? Oh, here we are. All right. Um, get user, we'll create a function right here. Get user. I think it 
think you can get I forgot how to do this exactly so we have this and let me see what other types of get we have just to see what they're expecting router dot uh, let's go ahead and close this up because it's causing the autocomplete to break down and die. So get and then let's see, let's see. Okay, so we have one with um, query parameters, and I think this is what we what we want. I think this is what we want. So let's go ahead and try that. So this would still be users. And then we would need an identifier. And we need to have with ID identifier. And then we'll do the rest of it in a completion handler. So completion at escaping. And then we need to specify what we're going to return. So this time we want to return an actual user, right? Or a response error or a router. No, a request error. My bad. Want to return that request error. Um, also, we need to say return void. So I believe this will work if we pass in the, the get user like so. So it does work, I think. Ambiguous reference to instance. Uh, get handler. Ambiguous reference to, and I wonder if it has something called identifiable object. Let's see, object identifier. Let's see. And I have another project where I did this. So let's go ahead and find that. So logo app. And I have a router right here. So I just want to see how we did it and then I can Redemonstrate it so it should be under sources app route. Whoa, look at all those groups! Um, this is vapor, so I want import Katura. Um, where do we want to go? We want to go to our routes. OS dev questions. One of the projects I'm working on. So if we want to delete, we need an ID string. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I believe this is still valid. Um, only thing is the object identifier is actually a UUID. 
Let's see if that'll work. May not. Mm. May need to import foundation. See if. There we go. So maybe this won't work and we might need to use a string. Yeah, so we have to use like, um, we have to use a regular type. We can't be using that UUID. So let's go ahead and change this up. So we'll just say string. like that that should still work and then when we do get user and we pass in an id we should be able to get that user so we'll say let users um user let me see let me see let me see I want to see how we did it exactly because there was something in there that felt a little bit weird a little bit strange a little bit different a sneaker 30 what's going on man so oh, okay so if we were to save this inside of let's see Okay, I see where you're what you're doing here. So what it what I was doing was I was creating actually um, a dictionary up here because that makes it a hash map. A uh, dictionary is um, using hashing, and hashing is way faster to look up. So it's easier. It's a lot faster if we just do it this way. So if we specify that we want a string like that then we have um we well it would be a little bit different so what we would do is if we wanted to get back all the users so we'll say let all users is equal to our users dot map and we can map this into an array by just returning the value so if we just say all users map and then get the value and then we return all users then this still works right um, let's go ahead and comment this out uh, this will not work anymore what we actually have to do is we have to save the new user to our users dictionary with its ID so we'll say users user ID um, and this is where we would do some error handling so guard let user ID is equal to user ID and this should this should always work but you know better to be safe than sorry else what we're gonna do is we're just gonna call that completion handler and we'll say um, dot fail uh, completion oh we'll say nil and then dot um, let me see bad request we can just pass in bad request so instead of passing the user object that we're expecting right here we'll pass nil but we'll send back an error and um, from here what we can do is we can say user ID is equal to our new user so we're setting that value inside of the users uh, dictionary and we're still returning just the new user um, oh and then this also has to return because it's a completion handler and what we want to do is we want to make sure that nothing executes after here so we need to make sure that we do a return so alright so that's gonna keep everything working the same way that it is but it's also going to allow us to look up a user by its ID. So if we just go ahead and say users and then pass in the ID, and what we can do is we can just say uh, 
once again, guard let user equals user by ID, and then we'll say else. Um, we would first of all we would need to return, and then we'll say uh, completion, and we didn't get a user in this case. And for the error, what we can do, I think we can create our own error. Um, let me see. I thought there was one to do a bad request. And um, so I think it would just be this one. We would just pass in 404 and then we'd give the reason uh, this, uh, that, that user doesn't, doesn't exist right but if we do get that user then we're just gonna go ahead and say okay we'll just go ahead and return that user that we looked up and then the error is gonna be nil uh, you can convert UUID to a string by using the dot UUID yeah yeah uh, true that um, yeah, absolutely, you're right. And convert the string to UUID by UUID string, but isn't it better to save it with the new ID? Um, yeah, I think we're doing that. If you see me doing something wrong, then let me know. Um, but you are right. Uh, oh, I think, I think what you're referring to is, because I think I actually put it as nil, right? And we actually don't want that. We want this. I think this is what you were saying, right? So we want the UUID string instead of just returning nil. Um, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Or else it wasn't going to be creating that value. You're right. And I was wrong. You got me. <laughs> Mustafa just corrected me. All right. So now we should be able to get users by the ID and... As you can see, it's still going to be on the user's path. It's just going to be a different get. So let's go ahead and run that. And then actually what we could do is we can, um, I think we can com combine these by putting them in our array, but we'll try that after we make sure that everything's working as expected. Um, play album, The Human Condition by John Bellion. All right. So first of all, let's make sure that we're getting our users back. So empty array, that's good. Uh, we wanna post a user name. So we send that request and we're getting a 400 bad request. So something in our post is not working the way that we expect it to. So let's go over to our create and um, what's happening here is it looks like we're not actually creating. Uh, let's see. What we can do, I think we can do is uh, request error. I think we could do it actually in a, in a dot init. And that's a 404. And then I believe we can actually specify it right here. Couldn't create that user. Oh, my freaking keyboard's acting up again. Or I don't know if it's my keyboard or my mouse or what, but sometimes this happens. Like, look at it, just starts. Um, that user. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's run this and let's see if we're if this is the error that we're actually getting back. And let's go ahead and try to create that user. So um, it doesn't look like that's the problem, which is a little bit weird. And we can try to change this to different error. See if that's it. Um, well, not that that's the problem, but at least get a 403 back. Make sure that we're, yeah, so we're getting a forbidden. So that's fine. All right. So something's 
not working as expected. Uh, so we're creating a new user. And then this user should have an ID, but it's it doesn't have an ID, which is kind of weird. Um, oh, you know why? It's because we're not doing new user. We're doing so we want new user. That's the problem. See, we wanted to use the new user, not this user, because this user obviously doesn't have an ID because we're just sending it up for the very first time. So if we go ahead and send that, as you can see, bam. This is our new user ID. So, and let's make sure that we're still getting back our users array. Bam, we're getting it back. Super duper sexy like. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and try to get that user by its ID. So, what we can do is we can say, I think we can just add this ID to the end right here. I believe this is the way to do it. So let's go ahead and try that out and see if it works. And as you can see, we get back that specific user. Bam, like that. So simple. Pretty cool. Pretty do pretty super duper cool if you ask me. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to just kind of group these together because we don't we don't need to specify like all the different gets. We just we just throw them in together right because they're all coming from the same route like that and that's going to make it a little bit less code uh let's see oh maybe you can't i thought i thought this would work i thought it would work but it doesn't that's unfortunate oh well all right so the next thing that we want to do is we want to do a delete so let's go ahead and or let's do an update first so update and then what we need to do is we need to pass in a user. Um, no, we need to pass in, let's think. Update, we want to update. We want to update. Well, let's see what an update takes because we need, we should be having to send up a new user with the same ID and that should work if you, if you were to ask me, that's logically. Right, so let's go ahead and see what happens on an update. Is there an update? So there's a put and there's a patch. Um, I kind of forgot which one to use in this case. I think put is a better default. So, yeah, so what we need to do is, as you can see here, we need to uh, specify um, the ID. And then um, we also need to uh, send up the, the user object, I think. Let me see. Let's get this all laid out. So we have an identifier. No, hold on. Hold on. We have a handler, which is going to take in an identifier, a codable object, and then it's going to return a codable and a request. So this is what I think. We, I think that is what we want. So let's go ahead and follow this pattern. And we're just gonna say once again, users, and we need to specify an identifier just like we did right here. Um, yeah. So update. Update user with ID and then this is going to be of type string and then we need to pass in a new codable object so we'll pass up a user uh, updated user or user changes and that's going to be of type user and then we need to also have the completion handler. So completion at escaping. And then we need to do, we're gonna be returning a user possibly, or um, a request error possibly, like so. 
and then if we are able to pass in this update update user then we know that we passed it in we created it properly so we're getting syntax highlighting which means that we did it right so now just like we would we would get the user ID right here we would do the same thing so we want to get the user by ID so um, well we actually don't need to get the user um, let's think uh, let's think how do we want to do this um, so I'm gonna be sending up the new user and that's gonna include the ID so what we would actually we don't even need to really get it what we need to do is we need to uh, set the value for that ID to the new user to the updated or the user the updated user we'll just call this updated user right we'll send up the updated user we'll set that value for the ID and our users array or dictionary and then we'll just return back that updated user so that looks like users and then we just say the ID that we're sending up needs to be updated to um, updated user and then um, we'll just do a completion handler that's going to pass back the updated user and nil so uh, and and just real quick the reason why I went I went with put is because I believe if you do um, I think if you do patch and uh, a, an object doesn't exist I think it might cause a problem I'm not completely sure uh, but put sh I believe replaces the object entirely and that's a little bit better so I think we might be able to do update user even though that user doesn't exactly exist and it will still work whereas I'm not sure if patch would necessarily do the same thing it probably would because we're writing the logic ourselves but I think put might be a safer if, it, if you guys know then let me know all right so um, what we can do is if let's go ahead and create a new one of these and um, if we do get on 8080 right uh, is it running oh it's returning the website that's why users like so okay so we so we do get on the users nothing's there right now if I do get on a specific ID right that's obviously that obviously shouldn't work uh, error uh, 404 error not uh, that thing's not found let's go ahead and switch this over to JSON let's uh, add in a name that's gonna be key lo loco and then we're also going to add the ID ourselves so let's go ahead and just grab this ID real quick it could have been anything honestly but we're gonna go with this fancy super complicated one and this will be our ID and if we go ahead and do put right we should be getting that object back and then also on top of that if we do get bam it's showing up right there bam bam oh yeah so working really nicely so I'm liking it so far so let's go ahead and let's wrap this up by doing a delete so now we have our complete crud operations right um hold on delete yeah that was the right one I was tripping maybe tripping All right, so now we just need to create that delete. So somebody remind me that my computer is about to die uh, when it gets closer. Um, delete 
Oh, and we're going to say user because I like to make it readable. Delete user with ID. And then once again, a string because we're going to be sending it up a string for the ID. And then um, it's just going to be a completion handler. Completion escaping. Um, and then we should be returning let's see I think that we can get away with I think we can get away without having to send the error um, let me see if I can send back a new object which would be better I would much rather return back a, a, a new object um, like this and then or an error so request error like so and as usual it's gonna return a void so this looks good to me let's see if we can pass it in here delete user does it work does it work ah oh, it doesn't work ah oh, poop um cannot invoke delete with argument so i think a string would be reasonable and i think the problem is that it has to be um a codable object i believe this would work Will you work? Will you work with me? You're not going to work with me? Sad panda. So, let me see. I think there was another thing that, that I did in my other project where you can make a return, a completion handler without having to do the um, all the craziness. And I guess the request error would just be nil. So, that's not exactly what I would want. Um, so, let's see. Oh, all the functions were done out here. That's why I did it the reverse order last time. Um, so, identify, identify or non-codable closure. Um, identifiable non-coding closure. I wonder if we can make an object conform to the request error. So what it's telling me to do is like, I would just do it like this where uh, we would delete this. So we'd say users, we'd pass in the ID and then we just set that equal to nil. Bam, delete it. It's removed from our thing, right? And then we would just do completion and nil see but that's not really that helpful because um or at least i don't personally find it that helpful because i would rather have like a message so um where was one of the ones that we could do uh that user doesn't exist so let's try to do a get user and we'll say and we'll say poop right and we sit we send that see so not found but like where is my um you know where's my error at like how would i handle this um if you're working strictly if you're working strictly with like response codes then i mean you could technically do this but i think it's a little bit better if you're actually sending the the error back from the server like the the server's kind of doing some of the error management uh for you like uh like letting you know what's specifically going wrong so uh, what i would like to see is my error come back so how do we do that uh this delete's gonna work i'm not really worried about that but what i want to do is i want to make sure that my error is coming back and um i kind of want to see is um 
enum my error, right? And can this conform to a request error? And then we say case um, blah. Does this work? Um, declares raw type error, but does not conform to raw response, uh, raw re representable. A uh, string, maybe. Oh, hold on. Let me see. If we say that this is also a string, does it work? So that didn't help. I mean, you can technically do that, but it didn't look like that's what it wanted. So let's go ahead and just say, all right, I want a string. You know what? I'm kind of curious now. What happens if we were to do this? Um, what would happen if we were to do get user with that ID? We'll just say that it's a bad request. And then we return a string. No, you can't do that because that's not what it's expected. Okay, so I need to return a request error. Okay, well then let's look it up because I want to return um, an error message. So what we're going to do is we're going to say Katura error message in response inappropriate um let's see often send some log let's see let's see let's see um catch self dot next Um, these are kind of old. I'm not sure if they're still relevant or not. Catch respond with here. I'd like to return an error object rather than my codable. It's kind of weird. I'm already plugged in. There we go. All right. Yes, so maybe this is a good way to do things. Um, so I think that we would actually have to return back our own custom objects, which would be kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of right in a way if you want to get more valid errors and what I mean like that is like um, it's going to send back it's always going to return back a 200 regardless uh, but it would be in, in an enclosed object to where you would be handling the error oh Ray Wunderlich perfect uh, perfect you know Let's see. So we need to get to where they're handling the errors. And this is actually where I learned um, what I know so far, pretty much. Um, I actually used the one by David. Um, so see how it's returning like the error. So we don't want that. And I think I might just have to, uh, I might just have to create it myself. So what you would strive for is you would always return an object, but it wouldn't be the direct object that you're working with, right? So um, what we'll do 
is let's go ahead and let's create our own object that's going to be uh, codable. And we'll say, uh, let's say um, a response wrapper. And then uh, this would be like um, a struct and we would call it response wrapper. And it would take in a type that is going to be codable, right? And what we would have is um, we would want to have like um, let status be of, uh, of type integer. We would have let um, maybe data. Let's take a look at that other spot. I think it was this one that we were looking at. So what we're gonna wanna do is um so yeah data data is a good word to use for it data is going to be of type t it's going to be whatever we're expecting to return and then um let error is uh going to be of type um do we want a response error um maybe response error i'm not sure I think maybe um, maybe just a string. I think um, a string for the error might be fine. So a string, and then the data would ops also be optional because we don't know if we're gonna have that or not. Um, we don't know if it's gonna be data or if it's gonna be error, right? Um, so let's go ahead and try try to return that type of object instead and let's do it on our get first so what we'll do is we'll say we're expecting to return and this would also be optional so uh let's go ahead and say our response uh, response what would do wrapper and oh yeah, I'm used to energy on everything just started freezing up on hold So let's go ahead and kill some of these. Yeah, it's because I have a uh, twenty percent of health that's starting to bug out. It doesn't feel so dead. Like, oh, man, let's go, man, leave me alone, man. All right, let me see. turn down and everything those guys. All right, let's see. Dang, it's not even my internet. It's just the computer. It's like bottom level. Hold on, hold on, buddy. I'm, I'm cleaning all the other programs. It's starting, it's starting to lighten back up. Wow, I got like a lot of stuff open. No wonder why it was killing it. All kinds of garbage is open. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. All right. That should be good.
so it should be coming back to life soon enough. I could barely see now. Um, all the applications that I'm not using are pretty much closed now. Let me turn the the screen brightness back up. If it'll let me. Dang. Can't even see now. Oh, here we go. It's starting to come back. This is... There we go. Come on. Work with me, Xcode. Work with me, OBS. All right, yeah. So... My system should stop throttling me now. Um, so what we want to do is we're expecting to get back an array of users like so. And this is also going to be optional like that. And then what we need to do is we need to create our response. So let response is equal to a response wrapper and we're going to say that the status is going to be uh one the data is going to be the all users and then the error is going to be nil and that should be enough to infer the type is going to be an array of users and we should be able to pass the response back now. Um, not sure if OBS is going to recover from all this, but anyway. And I think the status is supposed to be one. Yeah, I think it's. Is it supposed to be zero or one? Yeah, success. Well. Um. There is, this is where an error message would go. Um, I think status zero is probably better. Zero and negative one. Status zero. That, I mean, I think you guys get the concept, hopefully. Uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and run this. And this failed. And requires that. Oh, the object itself has to be codable. So we need to make sure that the response wrapper itself is actually codable. There we go. And that should get it to work because everything inside of it is codable. So now if we go ahead and we go back over to rested and we do, if we go ahead and put in some da da data like that, we put it in there and then we do get um, not this, hold on, there we go, and we do this, we get the status, right, and an error, uh, I mean the data, and potentially an error, so what uh, Kitura, or Kaitura does, is it actually takes anything that's optional, and it unwraps it, and throws it away, like anything, like it unwraps everything, and then it throws anything that's not there away, which is really good, I really like this, um, this is the first time that I'm seeing it, uh, but I'm really liking this. So status zero. So zero is just like, um, like if you were working in C or like, uh, one of the lower level languages where you have to always return a value, um, then what you would do is you would just return zero. So that's why I'm going to just say zero. You could just make this whatever you can make it 200, but it doesn't necessarily co correspond to what's going to be there. Um, so we would 
this would be where we're checking our status, checking if there's an error, checking if there's data. And then we would take this and we would, um, we would actually, um, we would decode this on the, on the front end. So, uh, let's see, hold on. Um, where is it? That's okay. All right. So let me take a look back over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and make sure that all of these are in our response wrappers. So I want to create a response wrapper and we want to get a individual user this time, right? And then this entire thing is optional. We may or may not get this entire object back. So then what we're going to do is if we're going to create let response is equal to our response wrapper. We're going to initialize this with zero. Uh, the data is going to be our user, which we're creating right here. We're grabbing out of our users thing, and then we're going to set the error to nil, and then we'll return this response. Now, as opposed to returning nil and bad request, what we'll actually do instead is we'll, we'll always be sending back um, an error. So what we can do instead of doing this is we don't have to be so type safe anymore. We can just say let user is equal to whatever's in there. Um, or actually, let me see. We can say if let user is equal to that, and then we'll just pass it in here right else what's going to happen and we'll just create our response up here actually so var response of type response wrapper and we could just say response is equal right here and this is going to be we're expecting a user object like this right but if we can't find this user with this id then what we'll do is we'll still send back a response we're always going to send back a response but we're going to say maybe something like status is equal to negative one uh the data is going to be equal to nil and then we're going to say a uh, user could not be found um or that user doesn't exist or something like that. You do not need to always return a value in C like in Swift, it's implicitly void. Oh, okay. Jorgen, thank you for the uh, the update. When I was working with um, C++ at the end of um, all, my, all my responses when I was learning, like I was learning the basics, it seemed like I always had a return zero, so that's what I was. Uh, that's what I was kind of referring to. But apparently, I'm wrong. My bad. So, as you can see, what we're doing here is we're just gonna we're still gonna be returning back the response, but um, instead of sending any data, we're gonna actually be sending an error, and then. Uh, it's going to be showing our error message. So let's go ahead and run this again. And then when, oh, well, not from here, kilo. So we bring up rested. And then uh, what we want to do is we want to say we want to get a user with an ID of poop, right? And then we're gonna get a negative one, that user doesn't exist. Look at that, isn't that pretty cool? That's I, I think that's pretty dang cool. And it's super straightforward, it's super easy to understand in my head, um, so I'm really liking this. Uh, so let's go ahead and if we go ahead and put in, if we go ahead and put in, if we go ahead and stick it in, stick in 
this object once again we're just going to keep putting in that same object it's just going to go ahead and create it for us and then what we do is instead of getting the user with poop we'll get the user with this id and now what we'll see is we'll see a uh, status and then we get back the object that we're expecting to get back which is pretty cool all right and then let's keep making our way through we're just going to keep doing this um so now if let user id is equal to new user dot id then we can do something else we'll do something else and then we'll say var response is going to be of type response wrapper once again and then what are we expecting back we're expecting back a user object so let's go ahead and send back a user object so let's go ahead and get rid of this actually let me copy this little sentence right here couldn't create that user um not sure why this would ever fail it actually shouldn't not sure if I could even make it fail. I'm kind of curious now. Um, let me see. If we're going to create a user, we're sending up the name. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think we could actually test this specific one, but it's okay. So response is equal to... Um, our response wrapper and zero uh, user ID. Oh, actually, what am I doing? Hold on. Uh, the new user, new user. And Hold on. Yeah. I don't know what I'm... <laughs> My brain is like going weird right now. Hold on. So first we want to insert it, make sure that nothing happens, and then we'll say nil right here for the error. And then if we can't do that, then we'll just say response is equal to our response wrapper. And then status will be negative uh, one. Data will be nil, and then our error, I don't know if I still have it in there. It's not in there. So couldn't create that user for whatever reason. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, we need to return this response. And we need to make sure that our response wrapper, now I would probably give this a shorter name because now it's getting kind of ridiculous having to write this all over the place. But um, we could probably just say user response or something like that, right? So we could just say um, a type alias up here, user response like this, and that would be our response wrapper. And then that's just going to be an individual user. And then we'll do another type alias, which will be users, plural, response. And then we'll say response wrapper. And that's going to be an array of users like that. And then we can just change these to the proper value. So users response like that. And it gets a little bit easier to read. I mean, that's that's subjective. And right here will be a user response like that. And then I just wanted to finish this up uh Dider says hey kilo thank you for 
for vids, how do you manage overloading of requests? And secondly, do you know how to use server side spreading tasks using multi threading? Um, I don't even know what the first one is, what you overloading of requests. So how do you manage overloading of requests? Um, I don't even know how to rep reproduce that problem. I'm still learning too. So that's why I'm like going through making mistakes, learning stuff. I'm just kind of learning. Um, if you give me a general idea of how this is handled in a different language, then I can figure it out. Um, but the fact that I don't do web development on a normal, on a normal basis and my real, the majority of my experience with service with, uh, web development is through Swift, through Vapor on the very few side little projects that I, little test projects that I've done. I can't, I can't handle super complex problems like that. How you're explaining, um, now you're saying manage overloading of requests. I would assume this is this has something to do with like the technologies that you would use to scale. Um, I don't even understand how your code would manage something like that. Like I don't understand that concept whatsoever. If I had to take a guess, I would say the the technologies that you use in order to scale need to be able to handle that type of um, problem. In which case I would be using something like Docker, which is another technology that I'm learning and Kubernetes uh, that would allow you to essentially um, uh, allow you to, I believe, scale a lot easier. And um, I don't fully understand exactly how Kubernetes works. Um, I don't exactly understand how Docker works. I'm still in the process of learning. Um, but I would assume that those technologies kind of take care of that problem for you um, and that type of thing. So I don't know. I'm just talking out of my ass if you want. If you want to say that I'm just talking out of my ass. Um, but from what I understand about web development, that's what I would say the problem is where your problem is actually at uh, the technologies that you're using to host the code. Um, and I would guess that it's not the code itself. Um, secondly, do you know how to use server side spreading task using multi threading? Now I was under the impression that you, yeah that there's only one thread per request or something like that. So I don't even understand that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know. I can't. If you can explain that concept to me in a different technology, I can figure it out. Um, Like a use case, how they solve it. Like if, if you said, um, okay, so this is the problem. This is what happens. A hundred users try to make a post request and then something blows up. And in JavaScript, what we usually do is we do this, this, and that, then I would know, okay, these are the keywords that I need to look for. And then I would be able to find that answer and I'd be able to tell you, but I don't know. Katura is easier. Kaitura is easier. I'm not going to lie. Um, I was super, super huge fanboy, Mustafa. I'm not even lying when I say I'm super huge fanboy of Vapor. Not even, not even lying when I say that I'm a super huge fanboy. Look at this, look at this face right here. You see this face? Every month I donate two measly dollars over to Vapor to try to make it better. Vapor 2, I was 100% behind. I loved it worked perfectly it made sense to me i mean there were still some things that were a little bit abstracted um but i was able to get it with uh vapor 3 i'm constantly struggling trying to figure out how to constantly cast your request into these different objects because they're using futures and it's not that i don't know how to use futures but the way that they because we don't have like because 
we're in you have to end up using like closures right so futures with closures is like not fun um and then you're constantly casting these these objects and then you get these objects that are futures of futures and then like you have to map them properly and it's like super confusing i can never like just do something straight up and in vapor 2 i could i could just be like okay this is what i want to return back this is how i want to decode you know there would be a little bit of like a little bit of oddities here and there but i liked vapor 2 a whole lot more than i like vapor 3 um when i got back into vapor 3 i didn't really like it like i like i actually hated it honestly um now that i spent some time with it and i'm like oh, okay i kind of i kind of get what it's trying to do um it's like whatever but i don't enjoy it like before i used to really enjoy coding vapor like in vapor one vapor two i enjoyed it um vapor three i don't enjoy it it's like it's a constant struggle it's a constant grind trying to get through it and that's just uh that's just me um you know i honestly i like future or promises um i don't even fully understand the difference between the two i honestly thought they were the same um so i would have to say futures because that's what i use when i do flutter are uh well it's not really future yeah yeah it's futures yeah so um in flutter and dart they use futures so i'm just gonna say futures I didn't even know that there was a difference. I thought they were the same thing, just called different stuff for whatever reason. But um, yeah, working with event loops inside of closures is a pain in the ass. I would, I would honestly recommend anybody that's trying to get into web development through Swift, if you're trying to get into web development through Swift, I would say use Kytera. I even put the sticker on the back of my machine watch. You guys want to see it? We get that. Hold on. I want to make sure that you guys can see it because I can't tell. You see it? That's the only sticker on the back of my on the back of my laptop. It's the only one. If that doesn't say something, I don't know what will. It's the only sticker on my laptop. Because I enjoy it that much. And David Okun, it was super awesome. He was like a really cool guy. So I was like, I like you, dude. You awesome. You like, you cool dude. So I was like, okay, I gotta, gotta represent this cool guy. Um. All right. So I want to just finish this up, uh, because I want to have like a a good reference to look back on. Um, in case y'all don't do this, and you really should. Um you should be whenever you're playing with your code you should uh whenever you're playing with new technologies you should keep those uh projects and you should try to um if they're not clear on what they're doing then make sure that you kind of um you write some you know documentation or whatever but keep it keep it somewhere where you can find it whether it's like on your machine i know some people like to use like dropbox and things like that uh, just so that you can access it and you can always look at it. So that's something that um, I strongly believe every developer should be doing is that you should be um, anything that you're learning, tutorials or whatever, you should be saving those projects somewhere so that you can always refer to them because that's kind of what, that's honestly like what makes better developers is that like the difference between one of the biggest differences between a junior and a develop, uh, junior and a senior is like, honestly, it's like just the speed, the speed at which they're able to write, write the code um, and to like, well, obviously pitfalls. And there's like a, there's a couple other things, but really it's like, like you're, you're getting paid the big bucks because you can do a lot more in a lot better, in a, in a more efficient and effective way. Like, uh, yeah, a m more efficiently more you work more efficiently more effectively and um just faster right and senior developers have a lot of projects to look back on when they're working with um technologies 
that they've implemented in the past. So if they ever implemented something like on a client project, they could just go look back at that. Bam, like, oh, how did I do that? Oh, bam. Like, I actually go back. I watch my videos. I use my projects here um, on my on my machine. So it helps me move faster. It's helped, it's helped me at work several times. I just be like, oh, how did I implement that thing? Bam, right there. Um, I was referring to multi-threading. Isn't it futures? Um, so multi well, so I don't fully understand like what you mean by multi-threading. Like, uh, because it is, so, so multi-threading has like a lot of different, there's like a lot behind the word multi-threading. So that's why I'm like kind of, uh, I'm kind of like, I don't fully understand what you're talking about. If you're talking about making a request to another API, then that's just like a future. Um, and I haven't worked with that on here yet. Um, I would have to see how they do it. I would assume since it's using plain Swift, like normal Swift, what you would normally use on iOS. Like this is like writing the iOS app. That's how this feels. This feels like I'm writing iOS. Um, on Vapor, you would just say that it's it's going to be... You would have to say that it's like some type of response and then you have to do then. And yeah, I don't know. Um, I haven't worked with it yet. So if you're referring to how to do like a networking request inside of here or do something on like... Um, yeah, something that would just require to be like on like a, a background thread or whatever that that's going to take some time to wait. And then it has to do the return. We can look that up, but the word multi-threading has a lot of different things behind it. So that's why I didn't fully understand the question. So Kaitura, um, their, uh, API request of third party. Let's see. Codable routing credentials implement. Let's see. We would just say third party request. And I'm sure I could find something. Let's see. Let's just open this up and see what it's giving us. Um, let's see. Credentials. Register router get. Um, oh, look at this. This is kind of ugly, but, oh, this is sending. Yee. That's kind of ugly. Oh, um, <laughs> hold on. I was looking at the wrong screen. You guys can't even see what I'm looking at. Um, okay. So I'm trying to find out how you would do it. It looks like you would be using some type of closure um, user dot verify password yeah it doesn't look like it's too crazy I'm not really worried about it I'll I'll have to ask the community real quick on how to do um, um, third party requests, but uh, call endpoint or something like that. Call endpoint. Let's see. So post query, let session, oh. Code not shown. 
Hold on. I think I'm going to have an answer to my own question by looking at the source. So I confess I should have. Let's see. Seems the request handlers in the to do list example are not throwable like they are in the blue mix starter. Um, instead, the handlers take the responsibility of calling that. So I think the biggest thing is that you are, I wish you would have posted some code. That would have been way more helpful. REST APIs, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. This is on the, the client end. A sync API. Um, was it prefixed with Kaitura? Let's see. So let's go ahead and find a real. Can you just show like a real life example? Let's see a real life example. Um, nope. Let's see, let's see. I think we can find something. Um, this is old, this won't even be relevant anymore. Actually, it might still be relevant and um, Kaitura because Kaitura doesn't break all of its code every day. Ooh, bam. Yeah, so um, I I would just have to like spend more time looking at this, like uh, figuring out how I would do like a third party request. But I'm sure that it would be pretty easy. It sounds like JavaScript. Um. I mean, I wouldn't compare Swift to JavaScript in any way, honestly. <laughs> I wouldn't even I wouldn't even compare the two. Play music I like. I, I do it. All right. I'm going to finish up these last two. And that will be the rest of today. So we're going to have a user response. Oh, no, that's not what we're sending up. All righty, and then we'll just say let response is equal to response wrapper bam zero um updated user and nil and we'll pass back that response and then lastly so instead of just doing it like this, what we can do is now we can send back, um, we can send back a, response wrapper, but since, since I'm deleting an object and I don't really want to pass back the user object that was deleted, cause that would kind of be useless. Uh, what would be better is if I returned back a string. So um, instead of, you know, a user object, I would return back a string instead. So let response is equal to um, response wrapper. And then we would say zero uh, user and then we pass in the ID 
was deleted and then error will be nil like that and then we can just return this response like so I want to see if I could create a user response like this zero I think we can do this this is pretty cool I just, I'm just checking something real quick guys hold on Yeah, you can do that too, like that. All right. I meant the promises and futures in Vapor. They are more like the promises in JavaScript. Oh, um, you know, I couldn't say. I haven't worked with uh, JavaScript in a while. And even then, I haven't really made... Um, endpoints so if i did if i were to jump back into javascript and i were to start if i wanted to create um an api because um brian vung on uh let's build that app he was uh he was showing off like one of the things that he's going to be doing soon um and he said that he works with javascript um he said that he used sales js um so that's probably what i would use the I have very minimal experience with um, Express, but if I was gonna jump back in, um, I would use Sales just because he had said that that's what he used. So it would make more sense for me to do that. Magic girls, god damn. Cannot invoke the delete. <laughs> that's weird it's not working for some reason i wonder if it's just xcode yeah um is it because it's not optional it might be because it's not optional because strings sh strings should work that's kind of weird that they wouldn't. Um, Cause string is decodable. It's codable. No, is it? Oh, well, maybe it's not codable. Um, huh. That's interesting. Um, so then because it looks like this isn't going to technically work because strings aren't codable in the way that they want them to be codable. Uh, what we could do is we can say, um, we can create a second object that just, um, you know, watch, you'll see. Uh, so success response. So we'll say um, success response. And this is codable. And then we'll just say let success will be of type string. So then what we can do is we can say that this is going to be a success response. And then let success is equal to success response. Success, the value is going to be this user was deleted. And then we can pass in success like that. And that might work. Are you gonna go away? Or are you gonna say that we're still breaking you? Okay, so um, now I'm curious to see, is it even this? Because I'm pr 
pretty sure. And I'm wondering, is it just because, um, is it because the, uh, delete is expecting us to just simply return? Hold on. Uh, user is equal to users ID. It might just be that um, delete might be specifically expecting you to return back an empty response, which is kind of stupid. Um, I don't like that because it's expecting you to just return back nil. And that's kind of messed up. Like you shouldn't just have to return back nil. So if I do this, it'll probably work. Watch. So that's kind of messed up that it's making me re return this request error and it's just nil. And it's just a success, but it is what it is. So it looks like you would definitely have to use, um, you know, you definitely have to rely on the responses that are coming back to figure it out. But um, yeah. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, so we don't need all of this. We just need to do this and we'll just do this.